And that weather was brought to you by Subaru. Robin? That would be Sam Champion, C-H-A-P-I-O-N. Come on up next. This man regains his sight after more than 40 years of blindness. His, his reaction may very well surprise you. Come on back and find out. As we said, you're going to meet a man now who had his sight restored in a way that has only happened maybe 20 times anywhere in the world, as far as we know, in documented ways. His story is now the subject of a new book by Robert Curson called Crashing Through, which follows Mike May's surprisingly difficult journey from blindness into light. When Mike May was a happy three-year-old, his family moved, and he found a bottle the previous resident had left in the garage, a bottle of chemicals. The bottle slipped out of my hand, and there was a moment where I'm thinking, well, where did that go? And then that's the last thing I remember. The chemicals exploded, burning into the cells around the corneas of his eyes, leaving him blind. Doctors said he would never see again. His mother pushed him to be bold in the world of sight. I think there was just this warring emotions between I've got to go, I've got to experience the world, and self-preservation. Go! Mike, a champion skier on Wide World of Sports in the 80s, he created a business including a global positioning system for the blind, and he and his wife Jennifer, who could see, had two children. Then one day, a doctor said there was revolutionary new surgery, which transplanted corneal stem cells into the eye, and with a corneal transplant, would let the light shine through. But to Mike May's own surprise, he wasn't sure what he was going to do. He wasn't sure if he wanted it. It's so biblical, being blind, that uh, people just couldn't believe that I, I wasn't jumping at the opportunity immediately. There was the risk of cancer from the drugs he had to take, and he and Jennifer had created a life he loved. Would that change in some important and profound way? But in the end, he decided to take the chance. It happened within seconds. There was this big whoosh of light. And then, for the first time, his first vision, his wife at his side. My first thought was, I'm so grateful that Jennifer's here, not because I'm seeing her and I've been wondering what she looked like all these years. I was thinking, isn't this incredible to be sharing this experience with her? And Mike May and Jennifer are here with us now. It is great to meet you. Nice to meet you. And thank you for the compliment on my green Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. Jacket. Green's a big color. Uh, I'm a big color person, so <clears throat> you prepared the part exactly. Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> well, tell me, though, even though you said that you had not been longing all this time necessarily to see the face of your wife, in fact, I think you said what you really had longed for. You joked with a topless beach. <laughs> I believe I read that. <laughs> keep that a secret. I keep that. Oh, it's a secret. No, no one out there is going to tell anybody at all. Uh, nonetheless, when you saw her face, what was your reaction? Well, I was so happy to be sharing that moment with her. We didn't expect to have any vision when the bandages came off. And who would I rather have right next to me than uh, Jennifer sharing that moment with me? But it wasn't as though I didn't know what she looked like. Because you knew from? Well, 15 years of marriage, exactly what she looked like. In your mind, it was exactly what you saw? Well, it turned out that I wasn't very good at seeing details, so at first I just thought, well, maybe this will change over time. But in that initial moment, I was just happy to be sharing it with her and to see her blonde hair and say, oh, that's what blonde is. That's not exactly what I was picturing. Were you nervous? Uh, I was overwhelmed. It was unbelievable. And you, Jennifer, were you nervous? Well, because we weren't expecting anything to happen in that moment, I wasn't nervous. I, would, I just had surprise, because when they took the bandages off, they were just checking. So we were caught off guard. You so it was the sheer shock of yeah. mm -hmm. the fact yeah. that it had happened. OK, I want to go through the way it returned to you, because there were fascinating things that you learned about sight and about the world. As you said, color came back immediately. Yeah. Flooded back in. You could catch a ball right, a, right away. You and could see to catch a, a ball. It's such a visual experience to catch a ball in the air that that was astounding to me because I've always been involved a lot in sports. And so all of a sudden, here was this opportunity, hand-eye coordination, 
and if it was moving, I could see the ball better than if it wasn't moving. But you couldn't ski as well as you did before this because uh, your instincts were different. At, well, and it turns out that at high speeds, trying to figure out this stuff that I could barely process when I was walking, is that dark thing a shadow, a tree, a person, or a hole? Well, this brings up another thing, which is even though you could see faces, you had, I guess, for developmental reasons, not developed the capacity, as I understand it, to distinguish. And I'm going to put a, uh, two pictures up there because they're the same person with different expressions. And you said that to differentiate between the two impression, expressions was extremely hard for you, still is? Still is. And it's amazing that my eye optically is nearly good enough to drive 20, 20, 20, 40 kind of range but it's in my brain that there's a bottleneck, and so I cannot see detail. And you once mistook a woman for a forklift. <clears throat> really? Yeah. How did oh. that happen? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an embarrassing story, but it's part of um, seeing a, an image and trying to guess what it is and being just choosing the wrong clues and guessing the wrong information. And even your children, in the beginning at least, it was difficult to distinguish between them? Well, I tell the difference by their height, their different body shapes, uh, different color hair, but if it really came to a face in a picture from, let's say, their school yearbooks or something, I couldn't tell the difference because I don't see the details. What's the biggest difference for you now, Jennifer, in life? Well, in our life as a whole, it really hasn't changed that much. I mean, it's been this incredible adventure. You know, there's fascinating things with Mike seeing colors and experiencing new firsts. But, but the core of life? But the core of life is really the same. Well, as we leave you two, I, I want you to tell me again, Mike, because you talked about sunset as a perfect definition of what is lost and what is gained. And that y you used to imagine sunset one way, and now you just see sunset. Tell us about it. Well... This is a new visual world, and I realized that not having vision, it was my alternative tools and techniques, like my Sendero GPS, that it allowed me to access the world in a full way. But there's certain things you can't quite touch with technology or with your hands, and something like a sunset, you can perceive in your mind's eye, but there's some additional element of actually being able to see it that's absolutely glorious. And now you see color, and do you still have the memory of how you experienced it in terms of feeling before you could see it? So much of what I experience is an integrated world of my new vision, which is just another tool, like my GPS is a tool, the vision is a tool, and I use, uh, use it when it's good, I tune it out when it's not good, and work it together in this whole integrated solution. Well, you were a pioneer for a lot of people and we thank you so much for being here this morning Jennifer thank you for coming in too thank again you. the book is crashing through it's by Robert Kirsten and you can read about it on abcnews.com thank you great to have you with us we'll be back